Brother Zeno Zabrowski, who was a trusted companion of the great Saint Maximilian Kolbe, left a profound impact on Japan. His charitable efforts touched the lives of the Japanese people deeply. His strong commitment and selflessness not only inspired Venerable Satoko Kitahara, but also earned him the honour of being recognised by Pope St. John Paul II himself. This fry was so well known and loved that even an anime movie was made about him. In many ways, Brother Zuno could be seen as a Japanese version of Mother Teresa, a beacon of love, compassion, and unwavering dedication to serving others. Brother Zeno Zebrowski, originally christened as Wodoslav, was born in the 1890s in the town of Sorove in the Russian-occupied province of Womza, Poland. Raised in a devout Catholic family, he learnt various trades and was thrown into manual labour at a young age. Due to the Russians suppressing Poland, Zeno's family refused to send him to school as the Polish language and their identity was banned from being taught. The only education he received was Polish and math, which was done at a secret school. In 1919, when Poland gained its independence, Zeno's life took a turn when he enlisted into the military, but before he could fight for his country, he was struck with an illness and was sent to the field hospital. And after he recovered, he spent most of his time caring for the wounded until the war ended. After his time in the military, instead of going back home, he decided to try and make a new life for himself. He lived a carefree life away from the church and attempted various professions, but found no lasting success. Zeno decided to go back home, and as he neared his village, he decided to pay a visit to his brother's house. On arrival, his sister-in-law opened the door and was furious and scolded Zeno, saying, The worry and suffering you caused to a mother you didn't deserve, and now you turn up when we're back from burying her. Stunned, Zeno headed straight to the local cemetery to find the freshly filled grave of his mother, Anna. He broke down in tears and begged for her forgiveness for abandoning her. The sudden death of his mother and his failed career attempts profoundly impacted the beliefs and perspectives held by the young Zeno up until that point. It prompted him to contemplate deeply the true purpose of his life. And in that moment, he made an oath to recommit to his Catholic faith. Having lost his earthly mother, Zeno began to turn to his heavenly mother for guidance and support as he began to pick up the rosary again. One day, after hearing a homily on the feast of Stanislav Costa, Zeno was inspired to pursue religious life, but faced many challenges along the way. He first tried out with the Passionists, but became impatient with the joining process. And then he thought about joining the Capuchin Friars, but when he saw them, he was put off by their strict poverty, which made him almost give up his quest. However, a friend suggested he should try out the conventional Franciscan Friars, and when he inquired with them, he felt an instant connection. In 1925, Zeno was accepted into the novitiate in Grondo, but his attachment to his personal possessions and self-image was shaken when his belongings were confiscated and his well-kept hair was shaved upon arrival. He began questioning his place among the friars, as before joining, he was accustomed to his comfortable life and freedom. At one point, Zeno had enough and decided to leave. He started packing his bags. Fortunately, Father Maximum Kolbe, his formation director, just happened to be walking past the friar's room and intervened and asked him what was going on. Zeno expressed that he thought this place was a madhouse and needed to leave. Colbert invited him into his room to talk and three hours later from that conversation, Zeno's heart was changed. He was convinced that this was where God wanted him to be and his love for God and the Blessed Mother grew deeper. Zeno became Father Colbert's right-hand man, supporting him in various ways, including fundraising a large Franciscan monastery called 
the new Pokar Narnov, meaning the city of the Maglev. He tirelessly went door to door seeking support for the friars and asking people to subscribe to their monthly publication called the Knights of the Maglev. He often faced rejection and felt hesitant to continue. However, Father Colbert offered him guidance, saying that if people give, it was for Our Lady. But if they rebuff you, that's for you, Zeno. It wouldn't do you any harm. Eventually, Brother Zeno became skilled at raising funds, for which he credits it to the assistance of the Blessed Virgin Mary. In 1930, Brother Zeno and three other brothers were chosen by Father Maximilian to join him on his mission to Japan. Zeno apostolic zeal and his trading skills was the reason why he was chosen. On February 26, they embarked on a long and tiring journey from Poland to the Far East. They arrived in the city of Nagasaki, and from that moment on, Japan became Zeno's new home. One month after the Polish friars arrived in Nagasaki, they published the first issue of the Japanese version of The Knights of the Immaculate, known as Seibui no Kishi in Japanese, which was the first Catholic magazine in Japan. They also successfully built a monastery they named the Japanese Nepokonanov, and on January 21st, 1931, Brother Zeno made his perpetual religious vows there. Brother Zeno loved the Japanese people, and they loved him. Despite the language barrier, he was able to connect with them, thanks to his captivating communication abilities. When the Second World War broke out, all the foreigners were put under house arrest in Japan. But the local police allowed Zeno to come and go as he pleased, without harassment, as they knew he was a friend of Japan, and they saw him as one of them. On August 9th, 1945, Mother Zeno survived the Nagasaki atomic bomb and courageously helped rescue the victims affected from the disaster. After the war was over, on January 6, 1946, a Buddhist monk brought four orphan children to the Franciscan monastery and asked the friars if they could look after them. The friars agreed and started an orphanage known as the Garden of the Knights of Immaculate. By April, the number of orphans increased rapidly to 300 children. Zeno was given the mission to travel across Japan, collecting orphan children and aiding underprivileged communities. In November 1950, in Tokyo, Zeno was introduced to a young Japanese college girl named Satoko Kitahara. Satoko was intrigued by Brother Zeno's distinct appearance with his long black habit and rosary beads on a white cord. When he learned that she was a convert to the Catholic faith, he then asked her if she ever considered becoming a nun. This question took her back as it was a secret desire she had. She admitted her interest in that path and he assured her that the Blessed Mother would guide her. As she got to know him better, she discovered his deep devotion to Mary and his compassionate nature. She believed that Brother Zeno would be the one to guide her on her path to holiness. After Satoko met Zeno, she found a newspaper article about his work in Town, an autonomous settlement in Tokyo where the impoverished inhabitants recycled raw materials for their livelihood. She felt a strong urge to serve there, but didn't know how to reach Zeno. One day on a rainy night, as she was closing the shutters in her room, she saw Zeno running through the rain, using his bag for cover. She ran after him and finally found him. Zeno greeted her and he introduced her to the people at Town. Satoko would often volunteer her time there. She was given the nickname Maria of Town, as they saw her as a perfect model of Mary by the way she served and loved others. Later on, she would give up her riches to live with the community. From 1945 to 1978, Brother Zeno tirelessly engaged in charitable work, helping homeless adults and victims of natural disasters. 
He not only provided food and necessities, but also supported the homeless by building shelters and organizing sports events for underprivileged children. Even in his later years, when asked about retirement, he would simply reply, I have no time to die. During his time in Japan, Brother Zeno's work has been recognized by both the Japanese and Polish government. He was awarded a number of accolades, including Japanese highest civilian award, which was actually for literature. Zeno actually could not read or speak Japanese very well, but they made an exception, for since the work he did was so meaningful in itself. Due to his influence on Japan, Brother Zeno has been featured on various media, including books, TV, and movies, and even an anime movie was made about him. During the time Zeno was alive, the Japanese people could not describe the type of work he did, as the word volunteer did not exist in the Japanese language. This type of work was very foreign to their culture, so they had to create a word to describe the selfless work he did. This word is now incorporated into their language. The last three years of his life, Brother Zeno spent a lot of time in and out of hospital due to his deteriorating health as a result of old age. The Japanese people would often visit him in the hospital, showing their deep gratitude. In 1981, a year before his death, Pope St. John Paul II met up with Brother Zeno during his visit to Japan. The Pope thanked Zeno for all the work he had done for the Japanese people and told him, you have done a wonderful work. During the meeting, Zeno was very moved and was brought to tears. On April 24, 1982, Brother Zeno passed away. The moment I first learned about Brother Zeno left a lasting impact on me. He strong trust in the providence of Jesus particularly through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, serves as a profound testament to his faith. What really struck me was he saw the value in every person he met, no matter their religion. He could clearly see God's image inside of everyone, and he made it his mission to show love and kindness to all, hoping to bring out the goodness of Mary and the joy of Jesus in their hearts. As we reflect on Brother Zeno's life, let it inspire us to grow closer to God, embrace a life of holiness, and strive selflessly to love and serve others, bringing glory to God. Brother Zeno, pray for us.